Do you guys need any, like, <laughs> yeah. turn lights on or off? Let me, get, let me get one. Is there more lights? One what? Sometimes these lights, do? I think, no, that's No, what's up? Submission? Like, yeah. You can have this back, bro. I'm not letting <laughs> you tap me. <laughs> what you got this there? One. What'd Corey give you? He gave me a do. Because I'm about to drop the mountain on him. What's about to happen, brother? Where are we at? We're in Austin. Uh-huh. Final season of Daisy Fresh. I'm about to beat this dude up. What are you thinking of doing to him today? I don't know. Hopefully not getting tapped on camera for a fix my game. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> took you out of the top ten. Uh, for the record. Oh, he did? Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. What's this about? Oh, oh okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> Twelfth and the nineteenth as well. Last so season of Daisy Fresh, first for it. Yeah. I was sleeping on that one. <laughs> you do a straight ankle walk on couch? Straight ankle? Yeah. Okay. So you got a straight ankle walk, and now Couch is going to give you the boot. Can you finish the straight ankle walk now that he's gave it to you? Go ahead. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to use my hands. Dude. You trying yet? <laughs> Whatever you're doing, you're straight ankle locks. A lot of the times people make the mistake of letting their forearm come too high. Mm -hmm. So you see them do this and they squeeze it real hard, but there's no you're not you're not breaking anything. Unless you're freakishly superhuman strong, you're not gonna be able to break them break their shin in half, right? So the idea is he always says is to get the ankle, tack this little, these little bones in the ankle. These are much weaker, obviously, than the shin. So when you can place your forearm under real shallow, right under the Achilles here, instead of way high up, it allows you to bat down on the ankle a little bit more and you create more breaking pressure that way. Another thing that helps as well is like, whenever you go, instead of just worrying about your forearm placement is um, pinching, so pinch here, and then whenever you go to finish, just pinch your elbow down, go to the shoulder, 
and high elbow style or high elbow guillotine style with the way you're mm -hmm. kind of prioritizing your grip here. So pulling this towards your chin and getting it. So so now that I have you here, um, what what was the reason? Why why'd you take me out of the ranking? Court? It feels like you're not trying for an AOP, but just an AOP, but just based on the way you're squeezing, it's also kind of pulling the foot in. Are you looking to do that? Um, it's that one's like that one's the, in my opinion, probably the tightest foot lock you can do. Uh, but going for it sometimes, going straight for the aoki sometimes, yeah. especially with people that have a really flexible feet or are just going to eat the foot lock a little bit, going straight to the aoki is going to allow them maybe to get their foot out a little bit easier. So I like. I like going for a really tight overhook, mm -hmm. like really classic style straight ankle. And then if they were, if the foot were to move out in front of me or or get get away from my overhook, any, it would come in front and kind of cut the angle there. Here, so I want the bite here, right? I want my lat nice and high. Get your elbow, elbow and, uh, just like bring it more. Uh, you want to pinch Closer it. Line. Pinch it. Yeah, you want to glue your elbow to your rib cage, basically as tight as you can. And when you make this, you pull this, pull your fist to your chin, and then get your shoulder to the mat. That way, the foot, all the way, all the way here. So now this foot comes to the hip, and you use this to press. So you're going to use your leg to extend, and then tighten this one as well. Like everything's tight. You're just pulling. Yeah. Uh, get it a little bit further back on the foot. So. Here, mm -hmm. we'll be kind of here. Yeah, okay. So what I feel here is my toe bone is ending up like right here on your tricep. Mm -hmm. Here. Better? Mm -hmm. pull that through. I find that when I'm going for a straight ankle lock there, and um, I am too high, mm -hmm. it feels like when I'm here, all right, now it's a real trick to like get all the way back here, get this deep bite. Do you have any tips on like, all right, I made the mistake of biting too high. Too high. So how do I re-situate? You can take, so go ahead. So you're too high, and then you need to adjust. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the a lot of the problem with the boot or the, what makes the leg so strong yeah. is the ability to straighten or keep the leg stiff. So you keep your overhook and then you like underhook with your free hand, the knee, and then scoot your hips under that. No, no, no. Oh, so go back. Yep. So it bends the leg. You're gonna make the leg bend. That way you can get to the foot and attack the foot a little bit easier. And now just re rebite on it. Yep. Pinch the elbow. Get the forearm under there, and then connect your hands into that high elbow position, kind of. You don't want it to pop out, so yeah. you don't want to be too shallow. Get your elbow a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Nice. I see. So it's like right on the ankle, just enough to keep it locked and secured in place. Yeah. Another thing too is like, you can take these two fingers, cup your wrist yeah. here. Pull this way. Mm -hmm. You don't want it, want it to be too shallow and pinky because this slips and it's not. You don't get that much leverage. Your wrist can bend. So this yeah. there's slack here because my wrist can move. You go here. There's no there's no slack. Because there's no there's no joint here. It's just you're kind of holding onto your arm. So I'm reinforcing the grip mm -hmm. here as opposed to here where I mm -hmm. have a little Yes. Um, one thing you said just now is I was too deep because I was trying to pinch this here and there was this, this room to come out. So even while I'm keeping this lap pinch, I all, yeah, all the way through. And then yeah. if it turns into that, that's fine. Aoki. But you just want to prioritize the overhook because you can go from the overhook to Aoki. Mm -hmm. The other way around is a bit more difficult because the, the L key is like more with the foot in front. Right. So it'll be a little, you have to do a little bit more to readjust to get your overhook back. The other way around though, it's a little bit easier for it to come into the L key from the overhook. Awesome. One thing you did in uh, that sequence there, where we're kind of back and forth with last night, you used that kind of like toe bar, like a foot bar. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And it's such a simple finish, but can you maybe talk me through um, why you transition to that off the heel hook, like what I'm doing to give you that, where you find that, how it works. 
So with the with the, like the saddle yeah. and all inside hill hook positions, the idea is to turn your toe towards the inside right. to protect your heel. So when I'm going for it, especially with your hobbit ass feet, <laughs> I got you know I can't reach your heel because you just keep slipping it or hiding it. So I was like, man, if I can't hook it with my wrist, the next best thing is going to be going to the toes to kind of pull. Because if I can pull the toes, even if I can't get the submission here, if I can get a hold of these toes, I can get your knee. I can keep your knee from turning in, which means I'll keep you from escaping or at least getting out of the entanglement. You can probably move around, but it, it's gonna be a bit more difficult. And you can finish here, but the biggest thing about being using this grip is just getting back to the inside heel, or inside heel position, because if I hold your toes, you can't, you can't protect this anymore. So I can use this grip if I'm going for it, and I use this grip, I can pull this into me and get my hips under it enough to where I can tuck it and get back on the inside here. So it's really good, especially when people are turning out really hard, like say I was going for a heel, and now you're already so far on the inside that when I readjust to do this, it kind of puts, puts a lot of pressure on the leg, and most of the time it'll be enough pressure to get them to expose their heel back. So like say you turn real hard, I go like this here, and then you turn back. So that's the idea behind it, is you, uh, you create hill exposure and you also have like a another another kind of submission here been able to do this especially if you can get your hips on the side of the knee instead of necessarily under it because here I push there's not that much pressure you get your hips on the side it's like it's like you were saying it's like a toe bar or whatever yeah. the hell you want to call it so this what? happens when you're, you're like not giving me the hill exposure I need mm -hmm. the turning T the turnout problem it helps with the turnout problem Got it. So my first grip comes with this hand. Mm -hmm. this hand. You want you want the the big toe mm -hmm. in the middle of your palm and to grab it. That is it the so, inside hand or the outside? It's inside. Mm -hmm. And then pulling it and then you're gonna Ooh. open your knees and push your hips forward and pull the top. Yep. Got so it. tap and then I, Yes. Right. Yeah. Because I'll be moving my foot around. So go back. Come here. Go the inside toe. So now here and then let's say let's say I go let's say I roll through like you grab it mm -hmm. and I turn you're gonna be able to beat me off of that because I can't turn my toe down fast enough to hide my heel in this in you know in this kind of position one thing I felt when you did it that kind of amplified pressure made it um, made it feel significant was the way you kind of held it against your rib cage like you drove your rib cage into the foot mm -hmm. you want it you want it you want to keep it as attached to your body as you yeah. can so instead of just holding it and pulling it where there's leave like you know room, slack or whatever, push. You want to like yeah. big chest, open your chest and kind of push your body onto it. That way. Adds pressure, just like a, just like you would like if I had you on the arm bar. I wouldn't lay flat and just pull your arm into me, because here there's no like this is as far as it's gonna go. So you push your body or your hips in and pull it down. It's the same idea. Here, it's just on the side of the leg with the toe with the toe grip. So here, a lot of the times too, if they're turning out really, you can cause them to turn out really, really hard with this. So turn, and then you, you can use it to chase the outside heel look as well. Sometimes people will turn down so hard they'll just expose that pass over to the outside. Right. Here, and then they turn out super hard. Come on, tell me what you're gonna do. Tell me what you're gonna do. I'll pull guard. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to pull guard. <laughs> Fuck that guy. He's the most brutal guy I've ever met, but we're probably gonna try and poison him here pretty soon. Try and poison him? Yeah, we're gonna kill him. We don't wanna wrestle with him anymore. In the wrestling room, Tuesdays and Thursdays is the worst. He bombs your ass.
I want you to show me that uh, the foot sweep you hit at the very beginning. Where, um, Off the overtime. Yeah, yeah. So you grab my head. It really works like at the beginning of the match. We start, guys come out really hard. I'm going right to the overtime, clamping this. So I'm clamping my elbow down. Mm -hmm. Thumb on the outside above the elbow. If you try to go at the wrist, he can just bend his arm. So I always go in right above the elbow. I'm stepping to the outside. You never want to step in the middle because then our hips hit it. So I'm going to step to the outside. I'm turning and I'm pulling down. And then I just switch to the foot. Yeah, you go to the back side leg. Either one. So I can finish here, there, or it's just a grip change. Just some, some little stuff I've been messing around with. Like that? Here, clamp that hard. Here. Yep. Step to the outside. Stepping down. Step to the like close to the pinky toes again. So now you're turning and pulling down. And you want to use these grips, the traps. On both traps? No, just just one. So like if I if I slide you by, I'm trying to catch. Yeah. Or I switch. Keep the, keep the yeah, just do the. Yep. Super easy. How about just that overhook throw? So you baited me to come in so here. I'm baiting you to shoot the single. Yeah. I'll let you get it up, and then I'm threading this under or overhook in the armpit and pulling up on this elbow. Now I got you basically where I want you. I can kick the inside thigh, get to my dars. Yeah. Boom, I can step across to get the wizard throw. You got options there. I think one time I faked the throw and step behind. Yeah. So, in that position, um, you said you're, you're confident defensively here. What are the defensive mechanics to stay tall here, make sure that I'm on the offensive here? Pulling up on the wizard. Just here. Controlling the wrist or controlling the elbow? Whatever is more natural to you. You know, if you got the elbow, you're more likely to throw me. If you got the wrist, you're just in like a offensive position. I can't really do much. I could duck. That's about it. So just allowing you to shoot or getting caught in the shot. But this is all down. So pull up on the elbow as you swing. Now, now you can change whatever you want to do. Got it. Keep that. It feels a lot like a, a knee fight that I saw you show um, not too long ago. What was it? Who's number one? The original, the original bus all. We started that back in uh, about '99. Would you mind walking yeah. through that technique once? What's that? That, that knee cut? Sure. When Corey is penetrating, open up your legs, couch. Okay. So when Corey is going to penetrate, the thought is on the knee cut. This is the area we need the knee cut into. Okay. So if you raise Couch's leg here, this is the green zone, where the pants touch is the green zone, okay? Everything else is the red zone, okay? So if you come in off of a knee cut, okay, and you cut down, if this knee gets outside of the green zone, what it's gonna do is naturally bring Couch's other knee in front of your body, okay? So one of the main mistakes that people make knee cutting is they knee cut out instead of down. So what we wanna do is we're gonna back up, we're going to step in, and that knee is going to penetrate straight down to the mat. I want you to try to chip Couch's hip bone with your knee, straight down. Okay, so step in, and straight down. Okay, so now, the knee is as close to Couch's hip as it can be. The hand is going to go straight down from the hip, okay, and it's going to come straight up into the underhook, and your left hand is going to slap the opposite mat. Okay, so here. 
So if you don't slap the mat when you knee cut, and you just cut straight through, Couch still has the ability to bring his back up off the ground, okay? So go ahead. In the beginning, you're gonna cut. Okay, so just this right here is all Couch needs to offensively start to get away or be defensive, right, and pop you up. So when you cut in and you slap the mat, it's gonna take that away. Now we're flat, Couch is flat, okay? So main things on this kneecap, one, Stay in the green zone. Anytime that you're cutting, you wanna stay where the pants are. If the pants aren't touching it, you have about six inches. Six inches of the groin, that's the green zone. Anything else is the red zone. The red zone means that they can stop you from knee cutting, okay? The underhook, the underhook, extremely important, obviously, you're just gonna go from the hip, underhook that tight, sticky, sticky underhook, bicep to underarm, and at the same time, we're gonna come and slap the mat. So we're not just gonna slap the mat, this shoulder needs to come all the way down flat. And we're pinning couch flat to the ground, okay? So off of the knee cut, all at the same time, simultaneously, we're gonna knee cut through the green zone, as close to the hip as we can be, underhook, and slap the mat. And that is gonna give you the best result for a fast knee cut, okay? What also happens is if you start to pummel and they start to work for underhooks. If you miss them, this is when the guys are going to wrestle up, and this is how you're getting into several Darce positions with Michael Pixley. So we're not looking for option A only to pass, we're looking for B, C, B, C, A, B, C, B, and that's how you have to be a competitive grappler. You can't always count on getting the knee cut, so we have to think, all right, next move, next move, next move. So we're going to knee cut, or we're going to cause action and make the defensive person react. You have to be an active grappler if you're going to pass the guard. That's what the buzzsaw means, okay? Active, causing a reaction. Let's see a knee cap. Looks pretty fancy. It's worth about three points. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you, Guys, one thing seems to be like the big difference to me in the way you do that knee cut is a lot of people kind of cut open yeah. and when you cut it's flat it, it's you, you can flat. feel that you are kind of pressing them into the mat the moment yeah. you get there so if you're down on your back couch come on top okay when couch knee cuts down okay go ahead from here even if he's right there mm -hmm. that's all you need to start to shrimp your hips away or start to move, okay? If he comes completely flat and pins you, like I said, now your spine is straight. It's in a straight line. And that makes it much, much tougher for you to be defensive or to counter and get a guard back, okay? So the main points, the knee needs to come directly down as close as the hip it can be, okay? The underhook has to be sticky and you have to slap the mat, bringing your shoulder all the way flat to the ground. The heavier, the better. Okay. All you need is two or three inches on bottom to be able to bump and shrimp and cause him to be able to not get the pass. Yeah, I, feel, I feel stuck here. Like there's not even anywhere I go with that. Just there's yeah. nowhere to go. So I think the old school way, not that it doesn't work, obviously they've been doing it for years, but the old school way gives you much more opportunity to get away or fight for the underhook to where this pins you flat. And even if we end up in the quarter guard, we're still going to pass and get the points. It's just a flatter pinning motion that's much, much stronger in my opinion. Thank you. March 29th, April 5th, 12th and 19th. First four episodes of the last season. Thanks for fresh. Why don't you step outside that door and let us know? No, no, no. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, this place was nice, boy. Boy. Can't help it, boy.